Welcome back to my channel everyone. So today we're going to be doing this really cute set of zero nails that I did for a customer. You're going to see a lot of stiletto nails coming up because that's her favorite shape. <laughs> um, so, and I did record a couple of these sets that I did for her and these were just too cute. Like I had to share these and I really love the way that these came out. So if you are into nail art, then stay tuned because I'm definitely going to get into it. So first, I kind of wanted to get into how I do my Frenchies. I am using Phoenix Nail Co. Black, uh, Super Black, and then I also went in with a couple layers of a nude from Rosalind. Um, very, very pretty, and I wanted something that went well with the black and had a nice background for the nail art that, I was, that I'm about to do. So that's why I chose those two colors. And this is a Nightmare Before Christmas set, so um, that's why I went with the black Frenchies. I don't know why I came up with the French design, but I didn't want the full nail to be covered. So I don't really have a method per se on how I do my Frenchies. Like, I don't do the A and or I don't draw the line down the middle or anything like that. I just go with the flow. Um, the, ver the most important thing about Frenchies to me is how far you want your line to cut in. So however high or however, um, oh, how do I want to say this? Um, of course I do side by side comparison to make sure I'm getting them all even. And then once I have my line, I go in and fill them in. But if you want your line, like if you want your Frenchies to look like deep and a little more wide, then you don't want to cut your line in on your nail as far, um, on the sides. So the side angle is the most important part of creating a successful French to me. <laughs> um, however far you cut this angle in right here on the side is what it's going to look like when you're looking at it, like if you were wearing it. So um, I wanted my Frenchies a little bit more wide uh, for the nail bed um, so you can see more of the nail bed portion and then also a little deeper than normal. Um, I didn't want them to cut in as far. So you can see I'm taking my brush and I'm just going from side to side and kind of at an angle because with gel polish, even though you could have the best gel polish that self levels the greatest <laughs> um, of all time, all you want and every each gel polish, I mean, every brand I've worked with, to some extent, the gel polish does self level. But I just don't like having those bumps or those lines on my gel polish. So to get it as smooth as possible, I just go the same direction with my gel polish how I want it to lay, basically. So, um, and then I went in with this RAR JSM reflective um, gel liner. So <laughs> I purchased these a while ago and I never can find a reason or a way to incorporate reflective polishes, but this specific customer really likes the glitz and the glam, but she doesn't like a lot of big bling because, mainly because she's a bartender, right? So she actually owns a bar and um, I was like, well, I don't want to, you know, give her something that she doesn't want, but I want to give her the maximum sparkle. So this reflective gel liner is gorgeous and I will leave links down below to some of the items that I use, however much I can find. <laughs> um, but yeah, then I go in with, and a lot of people like doing nail art on matte top coat, but I like doing my nail art on shiny top coat. I just feel like my brush flows over it a lot easier. It really honestly does not matter. <laughs> At the end of the day, these are going to be shiny, so it is what it is. Um, and I knew that, so, you know, maybe if I was going to do a second layer of matte top coat over my nail art, um, then I might not have chosen that route, but I like, I wanted to protect the reflective polishes and I just like to draw on shiny surfaces. Um, if I didn't, or like I mentioned, if I was going to do a matte top coat, then I probably would have just wiped the tacky layer off of the nail and went about it that way, <laughs> but as you can see, we are getting into the nail art now. So this took me a few tries to get going. So I did cut a lot of this video out and I also speed a lot of it up. Otherwise we would be sitting here all day, <laughs> at least for three or four hours. And I'm not gonna do that to you guys. So um, I, you do see me skip through a few parts and things like that, but getting into zero. So I went in with this milky white gel polish. You can choose what or go with whatever you want, but he is a ghost. So I did want some parts of him to be see-through. I didn't want him to be a solid white all over the place. And so 
The color are the milky white that I use was Dreaming of Iceland by Madame Glam. So I, that is, this is hands down like one of my favorite milky white gel polishes. I didn't want something too heavily pigmented, but I wanted him to look ghostly like in the background. So that's just the color that I chose to go with. You could always use white and dilute it down with base coat if you don't have a milky white. But in this case, um, when I do nail art, I try to minimize the amount of mixing that I have to do for colors. I just try to find a color that I can use straight out of the bottle if I can avoid it at all costs just because it takes so much more time and then if somebody wants me to recreate the set then I know what I used and how I did it and so I can just recreate it again. So yeah these were just so cute. She has not worn these yet. She's like I didn't wear my zero nails. I'm like <laughs> don't worry about it. She's like I didn't want to ruin them and um she was taking decorations down. She had issues with them staying on a little bit but I recommended that she use Young Nails glue and she said she started using that and they stay on way better. So um, if you're looking for a good glue, I mean, if you make press-ons or you sell press-ons, you could always recommend that they buy the Young Nails glue because it has really, really good adhesion, um, the brush-on kind. Um, if they don't, or sorry, <laughs> I guess you could always buy Young Nails glue to include in your kits. But you could do it, like she mentioned, I could do it as like an upcharge. So if you want like higher quality items, like upcharge them. And I thought that was a really good idea. So I might start keeping a couple bottles of Young Nails glue in, on hand. <laughs> but yeah, so now um, after I got his basic shape down in that Dreaming of Iceland color, I'm going to go in and kind of color block everything and just use, um, I'm using Model 1's white. I have like three bottles of their white because I accidentally subscribed on Amazon Prime and they just kept sending them to me and I forgot, like I didn't even know I was subscribed so I had to stop that. So I have like a whole bunch of black and white from Model 1s but I do like that this white is a little bit softer. It's not super stark white but it does show up very nice like you could see how the background um, does make it look a little more pigmented or a little darker so now I'm just filling in his body and I do leave like some parts a little shadowy or um and without curing I use that dreaming of Iceland and make that little like kind of fill in that little void where you see me leaving like the little shadow on him. So I did have pictures for references. I actually played the movie and then physically took pictures of Zero in the movie. I wasn't very successful in finding like really good pictures online, so I absolutely did my research for this set to make sure that it turned out exactly how I envisioned. Um, she didn't give me any inspo for this set or anything at all. Like I said, I just came up with this the design concept, um, and then I used the pictures that I took with my phone. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, like if if you ever need a reference, I guess there's nothing better than the original. So, um, yeah. Definitely took me a while to do the set though. I went through a few days. You can see I did not have gloves on in the beginning of the video. So please excuse my crazy nails. Like they were in transition and they were looking rough. But <laughs> um, I did eventually put some gloves on and finish everything up. But in this part I am doing his eyes and I used a black jelly nude. I didn't want anything. Like I said, Zero is a ghost. <laughs> and so, and he's so cute. Um, and I was just happy to do something that was not Jack Skellington. Don't get me wrong. I love The Nightmare Before Christmas just as much as anybody else. Um, but I am, but I just, yeah. So I wanted to keep everything as sheer as possible. And then I had a little fun with this part as well. So I took some neon orange. I thought I had a glow in the dark orange polish, but none of my glow in the dark polishes were like an actual orange orange. So um, I took this little bit of jelly orange from Born Pretty as well as their neon orange. And then I went in with these um, powders that I got off of Amazon, these glow in the dark powders. I wanted it to have some kind of glow in the dark concept. I do have glow in the dark polishes now. Um, I kind of wish I had them before I made this set, but it is what it is. I wanted to get it out. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I did make his nose glow in the dark and I do show you in the end what that looks like. I just made sure to mix that up really, really well. The reason why I included the jelly orange is because it just kind of darkened it up a little bit so it doesn't look as neon and then you just kind of get that surprise like when his nose glows a little bit. Um, and then on his nose, he actually has like this little pumpkin 
on it and I didn't want to mute that like I just left I used a color from Madam Glam called the star and I I didn't want to make that like sheer I guess I didn't want that to be as sheer as possible um I just I it's not very big and trying to get those little tiny pumpkin details on the nose was already hard enough. I didn't want to keep going over it a million times until I got it right. So I just used a color that was a little more pigmented and I figured since it was so small, it already looks a little sheer because I, I had to do like really little details and things like that. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's design idea. I do show you, like I mentioned, what the nose looks like when it glows. And um, I also show you the reflective polish, like what it looks like in regular light, what it looks like under the flash, what it looks like the flash on in the regular light and the flash in like a low light, darker setting. So yeah, <laughs> um, I definitely show a lot of angles of these nails because I absolutely love them. And my client was like, or my customer was just like, oh my gosh, like her mouth dropped <laughs> when she saw them and they are just blingy and gorgeous. So um, I want to thank you all so much for being the best part of my channel. I have quite a few videos to get out. I've just been recording and recording my life away. Um, so, oh yes. Also in some of my videos, sometimes I show the prep. In this case, I'm showing like the cleanup process at the end. I just take a file and I want to make sure I angle that file like towards me. I don't want to angle it up towards the nail because then, you know, you'll file into your polish and things like that. I just kind of go underneath and clean up any like rough ridges or edges. And then I make sure to like clean out like from where I previously filed the nails to get them the shape I like. I make sure that I clean out underneath the nail and get all of that like extra plastic that like when you file that little plastic piece that gets goes underneath the nail and things like that. And I'm just checking it out and making sure everything fits really well before I go ahead and put them on my little press on card. And, um, yeah, this, this is just like, this is my favorite part when I get to finish up and put everything in the box. And then I just take a lint free wipe, um, with alcohol on it, just a very little bit of alcohol on that lint free wipe. I wipe everything off and down. Sometimes I even take that wipe and go sideways in between the nails just to get every little piece of dust and every little fingerprint and everything else off of them. Um, and if I have bling on the nail, like little rhinestones or something, then I make sure to wipe all of those down and different things like that. But these, this set was just so simplistic and it was kind of nice that it's not PR. It's not something I feel pressured to do, all that kind of stuff. It was just something that I got to do all on my own and enjoy the moment in my, my creation. So yeah, just so, so pretty. So yeah, I'll let you go ahead and take a look at the nails. And again, thank you so much for being the best part of my channel. Thank you to all of my new subscribers and everybody that returns to my channel. It truly, truly means a lot to me. We are almost to 900 and we are on the road to a thousand where I'm going to be doing a huge giveaway. So stay tuned and I'll see you in my next video.